So the first is the satellite cells. So the reason these are called satellite cells is because they orbit the muscle like satellites orbit the Earth. So they're encapsulating or they're around the, um, the, the muscle fibre. They're kind of located between the basal lamina and the sarcolemma. Okay, so they're right on the membrane of the muscle. And they donate genetic instructions to uh, the new muscle fibres. Okay, so they, do, they donate what we call myonuclei, and that's what allows the muscle cells to grow. And then those muscle cells will also have satellite cells, and in the future they will do, donate myonuclei. And in that way, the genetic instruction keeps getting passed on uh, to uh, new muscle cells that are, are growing. Okay? Uh, what we can see here is that our muscle fibres have quite a lot of capillaries, blood vessels around them, and um, the nutrients that are needed to grow the muscle, the amino acids that are needed for uh, the, the, the kind of protein aspect of the muscle, are taken uh, from our diet, through our digestive system, in our circulation to the muscle itself. But we've also got immune cells as well. Um, now, muscle growth, growth is an inflammatory process. And this is why anybody who's, who's ever done resistance training knows their delayed onset muscle soreness, the pain that you get uh, the next day and lasts up to three days, sometimes longer you know, if, you're, if you haven't done resistance training for a while. Now that pain is the inflammation that is going on within your muscle. That's why you're getting that pain. It's as soon as you damage the muscle, which is what we do when we do resistance training, we're getting lots of damage. And it's these immune cells, the inflammatory cells that are, uh, that are working along with the satellite cells and with instructions from the satellite cells to grow these new muscle fibres, okay? So that is in, really in the most um, basic way how satellite cells work. So the idea is that what they want to do is get these myoblasts or like a single group of cells, group them together, help them to differentiate into muscle cells. That's what satellite cells actually do by donating genetic instructions. Now normally satellite cells are what we call quiescent, quiescent, I can never pronounce that properly, quiescent cells, which means that they're not activated at rest. When we go to the gym, we provide mechanical stimulus to the muscle through lifting the, the weight. So as soon as the load goes through the muscle and it transduces that load, so that, that weight going through the muscle or that load going through the muscle, these cells become activated. And then they start the process which happens in this slide here. So this is what we call skeletal myogenesis, and this occurs over a seven-day period. So imagine if you go to the, to the gym after this lecture today, you do a nice heavy resistance training session, um, you might get some pain the next day, uh, and whilst you're getting that pain and whilst you're recovering, this process that I, I'm describing here is actually going to be occurring in your body. So we've got this satellite cell located on the outskirts of the muscle. Essentially what satellite cells do is get a group of myoblasts, which are just these single nucleus or mononuclear cells, okay, we call these mononuclear myoblasts because they've just got one nucleus, which we can see here, and they get them to come together, okay, they get them to form together, and what we can see is that these individual cells have now become uh, one cell, which has more than one nucleus, so they've become multinucleated. So they're multinucleated myoblasts. At the same time, while this is happening, this is facilitated by stem cell markers. So um, uh, markers in the body which encourage this process to happen. And one of the key ones is PAX7. Okay, but we've also got an example of PAX3 and uh, S61 uh, forward dash four. Um, but we've got cell proliferation going on. So we're, we're getting these myoblasts which are contained within the muscle. Uh, they they are being uh, fused together, so this is the primary fusion step being facilitated by PAC7. So this is what's happening uh, at, at this point. Then, as we progress, as the days progress, and, and this pro kind of immune process is going on, we get what we call secondary fusion. So in that step, we have the myoblasts fusing to form myotubes. So we have additional myoblasts which attach to these new. Um, 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 a myo, myoblast, okay? Um, so now you've got these multinucleated myoblasts which are growing larger, additional myoblasts are kind of attaching to them uh, and, and they line up 
And what we can see here is the lining off, and we now have a new myotube. Okay, we have a new myofilament. And this is happening in each of these individual bundles of muscle fibers. This process is happening in this bundle, in this bundle, in this bundle, in all of these bundles. And the idea is that we're getting an, inc we're getting an increase in the number of these new myotubes. Okay? And what we see here is that as the, the, the growth phase is kind of over, and we're getting into the differentiation phase where this myoblast, this multinucleate myoblast is aligning to form a myotube. That's called differentiation process, differentiating into a myotube. We have differentiation markers which are increasing at the same time. Okay? And the stem cell kind of markers have done their job. They've kind of uh, enabled the growth of these multinuclear cells, but the differentiation is done by separate set of markers. Um, and at the same time, we also have nuclear kappa factor B activity, which is kind of ongoing through most of this process at, at different levels. 